protein. I hear about it all the time. I became a vegetarian almost three years ago now, and I did it for health purposes. And I have found that, especially in our world today, the healthiest way to eat is vegetarian, mostly vegan eating. There's lots of controversy about this, especially in the fitness world. As a certified personal trainer, I get questions about how to stay fit, how to lose weight, how to build muscle, how to eat correctly. People are asking me, all the time, how can they be healthy? I'm constantly being asked, as a vegetarian, are you getting enough protein? We are taught that our protein comes from meat and animal sources. The animals that we eat primarily are vegetarian animals. We eat cows, chicken, turkey, some people eat pork, lamb. Almost every food that Western civilization eats are vegetarian animals. These animals don't produce protein in and of themselves. They eat protein and then we eat them so we're eating their protein. Protein is available in vegetarian sources. So I want to take today and I want to go over A, how much protein does a person need, B, what happens when we get too much protein, and C, how you can get protein from a whole food plant-based diet. Typically what we learn is usually that adult women should have about 46 grams of protein a day and adult men should have about 56 grams of protein a day. This is an easy number to kind of keep in your mind, but our protein intake should depend on our weight. Taking 0.8 and multiplying that by the number of kilograms you weigh or taking the number of pounds you weigh and multiplying that by 0.37. Somebody that weighs about 150 pounds should take in approximately 55 grams of protein. Somebody who weighs 200 pounds should take in approximately 74 grams of protein. But here's the deal, and don't miss this. There is not a deficiency of protein in the United States. It's really rare to find somebody with a protein deficiency because protein is in so many sources, so many things that we eat. Women need maybe on average somewhere between 45 to 60 grams of protein a day. Men need maybe 55 to 80, 90 grams of protein a day, possibly more depending on your size. The other thing that changes protein intake is your activity level. Now, if you are an athlete, you're gonna need more protein. If you are lifting weights, if you're an endurance athlete, if you're being very active every day, you're gonna need more protein. It's not that much more. A lot of times people will say, basically a gram of protein for a pound of weight. They have done numerous amounts of studies with these high protein diet fads that are going around and they find that even though they're taking in more protein, if they take in more protein than they need, that doesn't equate to higher muscle mass or higher endurance or more lean muscle tissue. Once you have the, the sufficient amount of protein, excess protein does nothing for building extra muscle. Working out harder does more for building that and your body makeup and your genetics help with that. But once you have what you need, what your body needs, and maybe a little bit extra, like I said, if you're a bodybuilder, athlete, lifting, but for health purposes, you do not need any excess protein. In fact, the American Heart Association is up in arms about the high protein diet because excess protein leads to high cholesterol. There's been a positive correlation between excess protein and heart disease, excess protein and kidney problems and liver problems because what happens is our bodies can only digest and absorb so much protein. Our bodies can turn it into almost a sort of energy, but the energy that it turns it into is very, very difficult for our body to use rapidly. It's also difficult for our bodies to get rid of. Moderation should be taken in everything. Those who are trying to do bodybuilding to excess or those who are trying to do running to excess, our bodies are made to be healthy, but pushing them too far and pushing them too long is not going to build your body up. Our bodies are amazing. Our bodies are, are fantastic at adapting and changing and our muscles want to be challenged. Our muscles want to do new things and our bodies are meant to be strong and beautiful and, and healthy, but taking anything to excess is is never the answer. And I think that a lot of times protein is taken to excess because what we find is that, oh, if I eat protein, I, I'm more satiated, I'm full, I, I can build lean muscle, I can lift harder, I can lift faster, my muscles are growing, so why not just add more? Don't overdo it. Don't take too much protein. I'm going to include some links at the bottom of this video that will take you to some of the websites that I found information from, but some of the bullet pointed things that high protein ink take can lead to are weight gain, dehydration, liver problems, kidney problems, heart failure, high cholesterol. The other thing is that 
Excess protein can also leach calcium out of your bones. Over time, it can lead to bone fracture, osteoporosis. On the other hand, if you get just the right amount of protein, that can actually make your bones stronger because protein helps your, your tissues and your muscles and everything work together and building muscle makes your bones stronger. So getting the right amount of protein is super good for your bones, but getting too much protein can be detrimental. So it's, there's, there's a peak and once you've reached the amount of protein your body needs, Stop, you know, don't, don't put too much protein in your body. As a vegetarian, I wanna to talk to you about vegetarian sources of protein. I think it's important for all vegetarians to know about complete proteins. Complete proteins are when all essential amino acids are found in the same food group. There are some natural complete proteins in the vegetarian world. Your body can absorb them and assimilate them much easier than animal proteins, and so plant source protein for complete proteins are great. And those are quinoa, buckwheat, hemp seed, chia seed, soy. There's also breads that they put all the, all the seeds and nutrients in, grains in, for a complete protein, and some of those breads are Ezekiel bread or Silver Hills Bakery bread. You can also take things and mix them to make complete protein. So you could take peanut butter and whole wheat. That, those two things together make a complete protein. And in general, any legume or any type of bean and any sort of grain make a complete protein. So beans and rice, sunflower seeds and peanuts, yogurt and granola, lentils and bread, hummus and whole grain bread. In general, if you are eating a balanced diet and eating lots of variations in your food, you're going to get all the protein you need over a day's period to give you all the essential amino acids. Even if you don't have a complete protein at one meal, let's say you don't have um, rice and beans at a meal, but you have beans at that meal. And then maybe for dinner you eat some greens, some leafy greens in your salad. Those together might give you all the essential amino acids that you need. If you're having a lot of greens, because greens have protein in them, if you're juicing greens, ugh, you're, you're golden. You're getting lots of protein if you're juicing your greens or making smoothies out of your greens. That's a protein that's really easily assimilated into your body. Just a list of protein sources. Spinach, spirulina, chlorella, kale, avocado, potatoes, sweet potatoes, goji berries, any sort of beans, lentils, kidney beans, black beans, nuts, seeds, leafy greens, sea greens, there are so many sources of protein in the vegetarian world. I would like to quick touch on protein supplements. If you are an athlete, if you're training hard, if you're doing really hard workouts, during CrossFit or you're lifting heavy or training for an event like an Ironman or a triathlon or anything like that, if you are training heavy, I do recommend taking some supplementation. There's lots of different options of plant food based protein. Many of them are great if you can find organic, that's key. The two that I personally use is Vega, which is a nutritional supplement you can get in just a you know, nutritional shake powder type thing, or you can get the Sports Performance, which is what I like because it has the branch chain amino acids, which I won't get into here, but I, I really like the Vega Sport. I also like Sun Warrior Protein, raw, raw protein. Um, it doesn't taste that good, but it's also a, a high quality with all your minerals, all your nutrients, and your protein in it as well. And when I take protein, I only use half a scoop, and I only take it maybe three times a week, possibly four if I'm working out really, really heavy. But I do not use a full scoop. I don't need that much protein. I get protein in the rest of my diet. I like to get my protein from Whole Foods. Every once in a while, I'll, I will make a shake with it, or I'll throw it in a smoothie, or I'll throw it in my like granola and, and cereal. Like I said, I included some of the links that um, talk about this so you can so sometimes people like to see it and not just hear it So if you want to see some of these complete protein options or what excess protein can do to you look below and I'll have some links there for you. Otherwise, there will be more health tidbits to come. So I hope you were able to gain some knowledge from this and that you find true health and true joy because God created our bodies to be healthy and he wants yours to be healthy and have the right amount of protein in it as well.